What was hap what was happening? Was was your uh, your your it was not showing that you that I was waiting or wasn't yeah, it wasn't showing, and uh, the rest of them also had the same problem you had. So something must have gone wrong from my side, but oh, because I, I had uh, logged in at quarter to eight, and I'm just waiting, 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 and I do not know what happened. But anyway, we are here now. So it wasn't Good. your your uh, side problem. It was a problem from my side. Okay. The main thing is, as long as long as we have somebody to blame, that's the main thing. That's what I keeps take the us blame. Alive. I take the blame. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's start then. Uh, let's start with the Mangla Charan. Om Agniyana Timiranda Sya Agniyana Anjana Shala Kaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Yuta Padakamalam, Shri Gurum Vaishnavam, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana, Ragunatam Vitam Pam Sajivam, Sadvetam Savadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana, Lalita Shri Vishaka Vipamstra. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu. Dina Bandhu Jagatpate. Gopisha Gopika Kanta. Radha Kanta Namastate. Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi. Radhe Vrindavaneshwari. Vishabhanu. Sute Devi Pranaman. Hari Priya. Vanchakal Pataru Dyascha Kripa Sindhu Pai Vachar Patitana Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namunana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasati Gaurabhak Vrinda Shri Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, please accept our uh, humble obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined in and about to join. And we'll be later watching uh, it on YouTube. Uh, uh, dear devotees, um, this is uh, the last class for Vidhur Prabhu just for some time because he's uh, moving to another, to West Africa now. So we won't have his association, but we pray that we'll soon get his association while he's there and settle down. Uji, we are really sad knowing that, um, uh, uh, that we won't have your association every week like we have. But we are very happy that when you go there, you will be spreading Krishna consciousness to devotees in West Africa. So definitely I'll keep in touch with you. When, when you reach there, please share your contacts with us. Um, uh, I'm really choking uh, right now. Um, uh, but um, let us still continue. We are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 10. Chapter 10 is the Bhagavatam, is the answers in all questions. And Prabhuji, the text is 9. Uh, we did a little bit of 9. So we did the first paragraph of 9 yesterday. But uh, it's up to you. We can continue right. from the second paragraph and then go on till 10, on to 10. But it's totally up to you. Okay. You are the boss today. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Um very, very nice purpose. Uh, so let's read the translation already. How's my uh, sound? Is the sound okay? No, Prabhuji. I think you'll have to close your video because your uh, network bandwidth is low, it says. 
Because uh, I, I heard your voice was also breaking up, so um, yes, I, I so just I... thought I'd, I'd check. So if you don't mind off the video. Yeah, because when I switch on my video, then my voice breaks. I think Kenya is having yes. the same problem yeah. in Makuru and Eldoret as okay. well. Okay, thank you. So translate again. Uh, all three above mentioned stages of different living entities are interdependent. In the absence of one, another is not understood. But the Supreme Being, who sees every one of them as the shelter of the shelter, is independent of all, and therefore he is the Supreme Shelter, purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are innumerable living entities, one dependent on the other in the relationship of the controlled and the controller. But without the medium of perception, no one can know or understand who is the controlled and who is the controller. So this is a, this is a very important point. If we, can't, uh, if we can't see, if we don't have this perception, this is a nice word that Prabhupada uses, uh, we, we cannot see uh, how on earth can we know what is the difference between the controller or even if, the, if, if such a, a thing exists, it's impossible. And the only way we can see in that sense is to see through the eyes of Shastra, to see through the eyes of Shastra and uh, the Guru and the Sadhus. Otherwise, everything else is uh, complete speculation. It doesn't, it's a waste of time. Prabhupada gives a lovely example. As, as, uh, he gives, gives that example a lot, but it's, it's so appropriate. It's simple things that work, isn't it? It's always the simple things that work. Even from, your, from our collective childhoods, the, the things that we remember most, at least from the Western point of view of the Western childhood, are all these little anecdotes we learn from the, the fairy tales that we used to uh, read about and from the stories that we used to tell around the fire in winter. Ireland particularly has a great tradition of storytelling, especially in the winter time. And you get storytellers going from uh, village to village and they would be very famous storytellers and they tell, tell stories of ancient Ireland and, and, and all the different activities that were going on at that time in the ancient world. And we can see when I became a devotee that those stories that they were relating, they're all stories from the Vedic scriptures, but used in an Irish setting relating to the Irish language. And uh, so you can see that they, they spread all over the world. So when Prabhupada gives examples, these examples are so, so simple and, and yet so profound, just like the stories we used to hear from ancient times, the so-called mythological creatures who roam the earth, which are ab absolutely anything but mythological. They're, they're actually factual, but because our perception of life is so narrow, completely narrow. The, the, the way we see it, like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he, he explained that there are, there are three dimensions in the material world, but there are millions of dimensions in the spiritual world. There are millions of dimensions here right now in front of us, but we can't see them. We don't have the perception. We don't have that insight. So this word perception is so important that we have to be able to see. And if we can't see through our own vision, why am I wearing glasses? Because my vision is restricted. So I, I need the use of glasses, I need a, the use of something extraneous or ex, external material to be able to help me to see. I, can't, I don't have the hearing of a, of, of a dog. I don't have the, the, the smelling capacity of, of so many different animals that can smell so many things. But our, we're limited in what we can understand. But this example that Prabhupada is giving, the sun controls the power of our vision. How is that? We can see the sun because the sun has its body and the sunlight is useful only because we have eyes. Without our having eyes, the sunlight is useless. And without sunlight, the eyes are useless. Thus they are interdependent one with the other and none of them is independent. Therefore, the natural question arises and Prabhupada always challenges then exactly what he has just previously said. 
And this is also an important point. The natural questions arises concerning who made them interdependent. Who's the Ishvara here? Who's the controller? Why, why is it made like that? What, what, what's, what's going on? The one who has made such a relationship of interdependence must be ultimately completely independent. So this is, this is such an important point. It may seem like a, a convoluted use of the word independent, juxtaposed in different ways. But when we, when we read the sentence uh, again, then we can see that it's, it's very clear. The one who has made such a relationship of interdependence must be ultimately completely independent. So this is the, this is, this is the supreme. As stated in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the ultimate source of all interdependent objectives is the complete independent subject. So that, and that is also the goal. That is the source and that is also the goal. The goal is Krishna. To, so we've all come from, from this independent source. We all have a degree of independence that we can exercise of our own sweet will. Unfortunately, most of us have chosen to go in the wrong direction since time immemorial. But now we have this opportunity to turn that whole situation around and go back to see what is the ultimate source of interdependent objectives is the complete independent subject. This ultimate source of all interdependence is the Supreme Truth or Paramatma, the Super Soul, who is not dependent on anything else. He is Svashraya Rasya Rayaha. <clears throat> he is only dependent on his self. So he's not depending on anything. He's completely and totally independent. We are also independent to a minute degree. And the problem that we face is that when we exercise that independence, that free will, if you can call it that, then uh, we tend to exercise it through the medium of the mind or the senses and then that brings us into so many complicated situations that um, we don't even know how we even got into this mess but we're in it as Prabhupada says in that famous recording we become more and more entangled in her complexities in the complexities of Maya and this is the thing like the, sp the spider's web the spider's web is woven in such a way to catch the fly. And when the fly goes in and it wiggles and screams and shouts and tries to stretch his way out, there's no way. The more it wiggles and tries to get out, the deeper it goes in. So we become more and more entangled in her complexities. Who knows what is the reason for anything that's happening in our life? But there are so many causes and now we can only see the effect. But life goes on. So then we reach the state where we say, well, why? Why is it like this? To what, to what extent do I have to put up with this? Well, you don't. We don't. We choose to put up with it. So then we have to reach a stage where we just decide, okay, enough is enough. But then even when we reach the stage where we say uh, enough is enough, from a material point of view, then for the most part, the vast majority of the population, they don't know what the solution is. You can, oh yeah, I've had enough. So what, what is the end result? People take to drugs, people take to intoxication. I think we have lost Prabhuji. I'm sorry? We, yeah, we, we uh, had lost you, but now we have really? found you. Oh, yeah. I see. Back again. Yeah, how you're much, back again. How did just, you use just, the, just two uh, two seconds? Okay, two okay. Seconds. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. When I'm not on Zoom, Ed, the whole internet connection is perfectly fine, and as soon as I go on Zoom, it seems to be slowing like a like a, a mol molasses on ice. However, let's go back. So. We are only dependent on the self, and thus he is the supreme shelter of everything. Although Paramatma and Brahman are subordinate to Bhagavan, another important point, 
Paramatma and Brahman are subordinate to Bhagavan. When we reach the stage, as we all will, and we all definitely should be aiming in that direction, where we're no longer in the in the material sphere, our consciousness no longer, then the Paramatma doesn't need to go anywhere with us. We just, Paramatma just, you know, the business is done. The uh, relationship is no longer needed. We no longer need guidance. We're in the spiritual world. We're dancing with Krishna. We're running out with the cows with Krishna. We're celebrating with Krishna every day and life goes on and that's it. So Bhagavan is the all important because Bhagavan is Purushottam or the super person. He is the source of the super soul also. In Bhagavad Gita 15.18, Lord Krishna says that he is Purushottam and the source of everything and thus it is concluded that Sri Krishna is the ultimate source and shelter of all entities including the super soul and supreme brahman even accepting that there is no difference between the super soul and the individual soul the individual soul is dependent on the super soul for being liberated from the illusion of material energy so this is another important point <clears throat> we are the same in quality that's a fact so in that sense, as Prabhupada is saying here, even accepting there is no difference between the two, super soul and individual soul, the individual soul is dependent on the super soul for being liberated from the illusion of material energy. The individual soul is under the clutches of illusory energy and therefore, although qualitatively one with the super soul, he is under the illusion of identifying himself with matter. And to get out of this illusory conception of factual life, the individual soul has to depend on the super soul to be recognized as one with him. In that sense also, the super soul is the supreme shelter and there is no doubt about it. I love the way Prabhupada says that. And he says that so many places. There's no doubt about it. So, to get out of this illusory conception of factual life, the individual soul has to depend on the super soul to be recognized as one with him. So that's the that's the only we can the only way in which we can understand who we really are and who who is the original self and who's the the actual person that is inhabiting this this gross body, the science of self realization. The individual living entity, the jiva, is always dependent on the super soul, Paramatma, because the individual soul forgets his spiritual identity, whereas the super soul, the Paramatma, does not forget his transcendental position. And in the Bhagavad Gita, these separate positions of the jiva, Atma, and the Paramatma are specifically mentioned. In the fourth chapter, Arjuna, the jiva soul, is represented as forgetful of his many, many previous births. But the Lord, the, su the super soul, he is not forgetful. The Lord even remembers when he taught Bhagavad Gita to the sun god some billions of years before. The Lord can remember such millions and billions of years, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.26. Vedaham samatha titani vartamanani charjuna Bhavishani Chabutani Mam Tu Veda Nakaschana. The Lord in his eternal blissful body of knowledge is fully aware of all that happened in the past, that which is going on at the present, and also what will happen in the future. But in spite of his being the shelter of both the Paramatma and Brahman, persons with a poor fund of knowledge are unable to understand him as he is. And this is a nice point that Prabhupada is making here in this last paragraph. The propaganda of the identity of cosmic consciousness with the consciousness of the individual living entities is completely misleading. Because even such a person or individual soul as Arjuna could not remember his past deeds, although he is always with the Lord. And what can the tiny ordinary man falsely claiming to be one with the cosmic consciousness, know about his past, present and future. 
Om Ajnana Timananda Sya Gadangana Shalakaya Chakshurun Malitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha So this is this last um, this last uh, paragraph it struck me when I was reading it earlier the all the uh, and especially in Western society, I'm not so much talking about um, Indian society, but in Western society, those who are inclined towards spirituality, we have a great uh, awe and reverence for the cosmic consciousness. You say, oh yeah, the whole, the whole uh, entity is one, and we're one with the cosmos, and we're one with this, and we're one with that, and whatever happens, and, uh, even when a butterfly flaps its wings, you know, it affects so many things on the other side of the planet, and all this kind of stuff. That's all right, that's all well and good. There's some understanding that there's something beyond me as an individual. But it's 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 ultimately it may sound very nice and very wishy washy and uh, very uh, you know like intimate and lovey dovey and everything like that but ultimately it's it's rubbish it simply doesn't stand because as Prabhupada saying it's a propaganda the Prabhupada is saying here the consciousness of the living entities living entity is completely misleading. Because even such a person or individual soul as Arjun could not remember. So it's, it, we don't merge into anything, we don't become one with anything. We always retain that individual identity. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings. Nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So why do we bring this up? Why does Prabhupada bring this point up over and over and over again? Because this is like suicide for the soul. This is suicide to, to negate our identity. Prabhupada says it on so many occasions. If you negate your own identity, it's like committing suicide. Because you're, you're, you don't exist anymore. You're not there. Even in the spiritual sense, if, if you manage to at last, after so many janmas and millions of lifetimes, you get through the whole material sphere of life, and you finally burst through and into the light and then your only consciousness, your only focus is on merging into this Brahma Jyoti. It's just so sad because you, you, you've, you've gone through all these thousands and millions of struggles of lifetimes to reach a stage where you end up as nirvana, as nothing, as it's, it's just oneness. And what are you going to do there? It's and it's you know it's not to be uh, it's not to be disparaging or to point fingers or to be you know to be critical of other other faiths or other beliefs but ultimately the abrahamic religions that's where they're headed they're they're headed into this oneness where everybody is like floating in the cloud and lovey-dovey and everybody's playing a harp and they've all got wings and so on and so forth it's nice that there's a recognition that there's somebody superior to us there's a living entity who's in a higher consciousness than we are, and there's some faith in God. That is wonderful. But ultimately, it's it's oneness. That's what it boils down to. Whether it's Judaism, Christianity, Islam, whatever the case may be, that's that's where they're at. And uh, to a to a large extent, if we're not careful, then that's where we can end up being at also, even in the name of being bhaktas. So we have to discover this relationship with Krishna. We have to discover this relationship with the Lord as a person. But in order to discover that, we have to discover who are we, first of all, as a person. Like that, um, that verse that uh, Prabhupada is quoting, um, 726. O Arjuna, as a Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past all that is happening in the present and all things that are yet to come i also know all living entities and krishna goes on to say but no one knows me so in the purport Prabhupada is saying here the question of personality and impersonality is clearly stated why does Prabhupada go on about this point so often why is this it's very point uh, as a part of Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra. It's emphasized over and over and over again. 
because this is the real deal. This is where this is the way in which we're going to get out of this material sphere. If we develop a personal relationship with God, we develop a personal relationship with Krishna. And it's not just us merging into, uh, ultimately, trying to merge into the oneness that is also a form of sense gratification. It's also material. It doesn't help us in any way, shape or form. So the question of personality and impersonality is clearly stated. If Krishna, the form of the personality of Godhead, were maya or material, as the impersonalists consider him to be, then, like the living entity, he would change his body and forget everything about his past life. So, of course, as devotees, we know that uh, Krishna is the absolute truth, at least in theory. We know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We know that we can ultimately, in theory, again, develop a relationship with him. But there are so many obstacles on the path, and those obstacles on the path, ultimately, they can also be uh, seemingly spiritual, but they can also divert us from the from the real deal. So Prabhupada is saying, if then like the living entity, Krishna would also change his body and forget everything about his past life. Anyone with a material body cannot remember his past life, nor can he foretell his future life, nor can he predict the outcome of his present life. Therefore, he cannot know what is happening in past, present and future. Unless one is liberated from material contamination, he cannot know past, present and future. So when we're ultimately liberated from material contamination, we will know past, present and future. That is guaranteed. Unlike the ordinary human being, Lord Krishna clearly says that he completely knows what happened in the past what is happening in the present and what will happen in the future. I always give the example of the ant. It may seem somewhat mundane. It is mundane, but there's so many analogies we use that are seemingly mundane. If you're looking at an ant walking on the floor, you can see where that ant has come from, you can see where that ant is, and you can see where the ant is going. So you can see, to a certain extent, the, the past, the present and the future of the ant because you're looking at it from the viewpoint of a human being. So you're, you're, you're obviously your consciousness is on a higher level than the ant. So the, the consciousness of the demigods is on a higher level than our consciousness. The consciousness of the superior beings are on a much higher level than them. So what, what, what to speak of um, in the spiritual world, it's a completely different dimension, a completely different set of consciousness. So we, we can understand from these simple examples that we can understand to a certain extent past, present and future of a simple insect. But from the point of view of the superior beings, they look at, at, at us and our consciousness is in a completely different state of mind altogether. In the fourth chapter we have seen, Prabhupada goes on to say, that Lord Krishna remembers instructing Vivasvan, the sun god, millions of years ago. Krishna knows every living entity because he is situated in every living being's heart as the super soul. But despite his presence in every living entity as super soul and his presence as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the less intelligent, even if able to realize the impersonal Brahman, cannot realize Sri Krishna as the Supreme Person. So then what is the use? What is the use of realizing the impersonal Brahman? It, it, it achieves absolutely nothing. And we, we just go nowhere. And we've gone through all this, you know, this, these yogas and these uh, tapasyas and these austerities and everything to end up with, with zero. As Prabhupada said so many times again, you can multiply so many zeros, a million zeros, you multiply them all together, you end up with zero. But you put the one in front of the zero, then it has value. So that one is Krishna. He is just like the sun. And Maya is like a cloud. In the material world, we can see that there is the sun and there are clouds and different stars and planets. The clouds may cover all the sky temporarily, but this covering is only apparent to our limited vision. So we, we have a, a spiritual identity that is there right now. Our original spiritual identity is there, is manifesting now. 
But because we're, we're covered, the cloud is covering the sun, we cannot see it. So we cannot see that. So we have to remove. We have to remove that cloud. And we remove that cloud through the process of sadhana bhakti, through the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. The sun, moon and the stars are not actually covered. Similarly, Maya cannot cover the Supreme Lord. By his internal potency, he is not manifest, manifest to the less intelligent class of men. As it is stated in the third verse of this chapter, out of many millions and millions of men, some try to become perfect in this human form of life. And out of thousands and thousands of such perfected men, hardly one can understand what Lord Krishna is. And this is a fact. Even if one is perfected by realization of impersonal Brahman or localized Paramatma, he cannot possibly understand the Supreme Person of Godhead, Sri Krishna, without being in Krishna consciousness. So obviously the key is to develop Krishna consciousness. So we've been reading, um, we've been reading the Krishna book because of the month of Damodar. We've been reading the pastimes of Krishna. And we went on, or we're continuing to read uh, the Krishna book. And we've gone past the, uh, the Damodar Leela, and we're reading every night. And it's so wonderful because without any effort whatsoever we're just reading about krishna leela we're discussing krishna leela it's so wonderful the, the the pastimes of of krishna in the krishna book are so attractive and the very word krishna means all attractive and they're so they're so attractive that you just want to you just want to read more and more and more and more and then you're you're, you're taking a a glass of milk at night, you're reading Krishna book, we're all reading Krishna book together, take a little glass of milk, we go to take rest. Of course, your consciousness is, is automatically enveloped in thoughts of Krishna. And, and you can see that when you become absorbed in the book, or you become absorbed in the Krishna Leela, there's, it's, it's just so natural. It feels so, like such a natural position for the soul to be in. And then we just go, go on like that, and then that becomes a part of our, our consciousness. It's not something extraneous or external that we're doing, oh, now it's time for Mangalarti, and now it's time for Guru Puja, and now it's time for Japa. So it's like a, like a duty or an obligation. No, it goes past that. And it reaches a stage where we're actually absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. And before we know it, lo and behold, we're actually Krishna conscious. It's such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Even if we get a tiny little glimpse of that on occasion, just like Dhruva Maharaj, he got a tiny little darshan of Lord Vishnu. And he said, wow, I, I wanted a big kingdom. I want to be at the top of the world. I want to be in charge of everything. I was doing all this tapasya. And what was I doing? I was searching after pieces of broken glass. And here now, this diamond has appeared. And I was just searching for a piece of broken glass. What a fool I've been. And he got the darshan of, of Lord Vishnu. But that gave him enough. That gave him an incentive. And then from then on, he carried on in a mood of Krishna consciousness. So we get this momentary glimpses into the spiritual world. But through the association of devotees, through, through reading a book, through uh, listening to Srila Prabhupada, through engaging with devotees, through uh, participating in the kirtan, through chanting our japa, and we get these momentary glimpses. These are the things that we have to hold on to. This is the real deal. Not this artificial stuff of trying to uh, just uh, go through the motions of the process of satana bhakti. When we're reading the books, we have to take them seriously. Take every single word into consideration. Don't get involved, as Prabhupada is saying here, the propaganda of the identity of cosmic consciousness with the consciousness of the individual living entities completely misleading because even such a person or individual as Arjun could not remember his previous lives. So we don't want to get merged into this cosmic consciousness. It's not us. We want to be, we want the real deal. We have the real deal. We're given this opportunity by, by Prabhupada. Do not allow for a single second the, uh, 
the the world and and all its uh, its opinions and uh, and its its problems and all its uh, its deviations from the from the absolute truth do not allow us for a second to bring us away from the from the absolute truth from getting absorbed completely and totally in our in our sadhana bhakti to, so we reach the stage finally of getting out of this horrible place getting out of this material world and just simply you don't even have to you don't even have to we don't even have to leave our body to do it you simply have to become absorbed in thoughts of krishna and then it's automatically there just like with um, with ajmil when finally he realized after the conversation between the yama dutas and the vishnu dutas and he's observing this this conversation is going on all the time the super soul is guiding us all the time this is where we're not conscious of the existence of the super soul who's guiding us in so many ways. We're listening to Maya. The super soul is guiding us in the other way. Don't listen to Maya, listen to me. Uh, but, but when we become conscious as Ajmil, he had that opportunity at the point of death to call out the name of his son, not even calling out the name of Krishna, calling out the name of his son. And he got, he got uh, the darshan of the Lord. So then he went on and perfected his life the remaining few years of his life and went back to Godhead. And that's all we have to do. We just have to follow the process, be absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, dedicate our lives to the mission of Srila Prabhupada, do our little bit, whatever little bit it may be, and to the best of our ability, just carry on and forget about, you know, what Sansa Sansa was saying and this one is saying that about you and this one and the other one is criticizing you or life is, you know, just being very, very difficult as it is. Life is designed to be difficult. And we just, we just do everything to the best of our ability in the service of the Lord and certainly dedicate our lives to Prabhupada's mission. There's nothing more we can ask for, nothing more that we need. So I'll read the I'll read the verse again and then I'll take any questions that may be there. All three of the above mentioned stages of different living entities are interdependent. And that's a fact. All three. In the absence of one, another is not understood. But the supreme being who sees every one of them is the shelter of the shelter, is independent of all, and therefore he is the supreme shelter. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Shall I take a chance and switch on the video? See if any is is is, is it still slow? Yes, probably it's still slow because we oh. can just see a small screen from you. But anyway, leave that screen on because only okay. when you answer, when you answer, maybe uh, we might ask you to uh, okay. switch it on because we want to see you as much as possible today. For people, for people, you must be desperate. We are, Life, we are, oh. we are really desperate. Yes, yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for today's session, Prabhuji, and explaining us the three stages. Um, uh, and then uh, oh, I, I really liked the analogy of the past, present, and future of an ant. And it just mm. um, sunk in so beautifully uh, that, yes, so so somebody else on top of me can see my past, present, future. Um, and um, uh, thank you very much for making that point. I open it up to questions. Please, please uh, ask any questions or make comments. We won't be seeing Vidur Prabhu for quite some time now. So uh, kindly uh make your comments or questions please Hare Krishna I'm purposely Hare cutting Krishna. this oh Jai Hari Ball Hari Ball Hari sorry carry on carry on uh I I was I was cutting this purposely a little bit short this evening uh we have two two wonderful uh visitors from Bhaktivedanta Manor here in Nakuru uh, we have uh, Pranabandhu and his w wonderful wife, who was the temple president for many, many years in Bhaktivedanta Manor. And um, they just knocked on my door and told me, oh, the evening prasadam is ready if you want to come and take prasadam. So being greedy 
and being so <laughs> completely selfish and tomorrow being a fasting day, I said, okay, let me cut this off and uh, go and take my evening prasada. Please, please ask the question. I'd be if very I'm grateful. Like, I wouldn't ask the question now. you got to go and get your prasada. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, 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 please ask Prabhu, the question. You, you said something so sweet and Prabhupada always stress about um, associating with devotee and, and discuss uh, the, the scriptures with devotee and scrutinize it and make loving, lasting friendship with people. Prabhu, that is so hard to find, to, yes. to make that kind of commitment. And it's so sad because we will be relishing love and, and happiness and bliss if we do that. And I am doing a discussion with two other people, which is nice. It's lovely, but, isn't it? It's really so sweet. Oh, and, and, it is and, so, and it is and it is rare. It is so rare that we get it that is chance. So rare. To, yeah. And Prabhu, as you say, you can't wait to do it. You know, you can't wait to get together. Yeah. A week is too long to wait, and it's so sweet. It's like what what Prabhupada and all the disciples say. The more you read, you you can't wait. You, you can't wait to get to it and keep reading it. But you know, we don't. Re I don't read enough. But that discussion is is my lifeline. I tell you, it's so yeah. beautiful. Yes, it it does yeah. something to you from the core, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Even in an informal way, even if it's not in a class setting, yeah. if we're just sitting around and chatting. I remember the. I remember the first time I I went to Brindavan. And uh, some sannyasis were sitting on the on the roof of the Krishna Balram Mandir, and we're just chilling out and just you know just shooting the breeze. All the talk was about Krishna, and one sannyasi said to the other, "You know, one time all the people in Brindavan they came to Nanda Maharaj and they were saying to Nanda Maharaj, we think that your son is God.'" And then they had this big discussion and there was a big uh, argument almost. Well, well, he did this and he did that and he did the other. So Nanda Maharaj said, well, maybe he is God, maybe he isn't. We're, we're not sure. But we know that when there's a storm in the nighttime, he comes running into our bedroom because he's crying because he's afraid of the storm. What kind of a God is that? You know, so th it's a simple thing, but it's about yeah. Krishna. And it's, Absolutely. it's so wonderful, you know, to make, to share these little stories and that we, we become automatically attracted to this little blue blue boy who's playing the flute and getting up to nasty, mm. naughty mischief and everything. But he's the Bhagavan. Mm. He's the Bhagavan. So when we get past that stage of Aishvarya, of, of the mood of awe and reverence, as Mother Yashoda had that wonderful opportunity to do, and we just, it's just beautiful. It's just love. It's just love. It and is love, very, yes. Yeah, and that's all we need. That's all we need. That's all any of us need, isn't yeah. it? Just, and we, we went to a group and, and, and they were all shop, talk shop, you know, all the time. And so I yeah. said, why don't we speak Krishna? Let's talk about Krishna. And, you know, uh -huh. they would do everything to avoid it. Isn't it sad? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. it is. It is. Okay. Are you Jai, going? You. Prabhu, where thank are you, you going? Much. You're going to the end of the other world or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, Guinea. It's in West Africa. I've never been to West Africa in my life. I've spent many years in Africa, but all in East Africa. So now I'm going to try a new a new preaching field. It's a 100% Muslim country. So it's going to be interesting. And I have a friend there who's sponsoring me, who's managing to put me up and I'm going to move my way around. I think there are Gorni Thai deities there that uh, I, I donated to one sannyasi many, many years ago. And I'm going to try to rejuvenate them and maybe start a little Gore, uh, Nittai Gore temple. And we'll see how it goes. We'll see what Krishna has in store. Krishna has a plan. Krishna of course, of course. Yeah. Hurry, bowl, enjoy. Thank you. So he, he can see your past, present, and future. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Thank you. Any much. other questions or comments? Because I want Prabhuji to have his prashadam with these visitors who are coming to Eldoret tomorrow. So oh, yes, of course. Yes, I just yes. want to say we're all ants. We are. Yes. We are yeah. all like a little ants. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. On that note, uh, Janu Kanya Mataji, can you please end the session for today? It will mean it is a special day today with. Oh, Hare Krishna. Krishna.
ใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใครใ